like some sponsorship to travel all over the EU making friends. <laughs> to this he responded wryly, my dear lady, we would all like to travel around Europe in that way. It's not going to happen. Oh, said I, I thought Europe was built on the free lunch. Certainly not, he said. <laughs> you have before you paintings that reveal the whole of Europe in the early 21st century. These ordinary Europeans, as seen by British artists, are, in effect, an historical document. I think you will agree that they look like the sort of people one might like to be friends with, or with whom one might like to share a drink and a talk. They are people who are comfortable in themselves, confident, quite well off, and independent. They are people who feel safe in expressing their individuality. The freedom to be like this has been hard won for Europe over the centuries. Like most of you, I value the possession of this gift. I might even value it more than some because I spent so many years living outside Europe and visiting countries where such things cannot be taken for granted. I don't intend to speak for long, but I would just like to tell you how the exhibition came about. Valuing Europe as I do is because I have lived in places where democracy and the rule of law don't really work very well. I also noticed when I returned to Britain I was shocked to learn that many people here complain about their lives, about Europe, about almost everything really, apparently without realising how fortunate they are to be European. I was particularly upset with the rise of UKIP along the south coast where the IMOS Foundation that organised this exhibition is based. Far from quarrelling with our compatriots on the continent, I would prefer a friendly approach. I wondered how this desire could be expressed, what with my complete lack of any political or administrative power. Restricted to the circumstances that I have, that is, a small arts foundation, it came to me that the point could be made in a direct and simple way by going out with amicable intentions and expressing our warmth towards others in Europe on a person-to-person -person basis. The exhibition opened at the Folkestone Triennial last summer and is now travelling around the UK. We have been invited to four capitals in Europe so far, but are restricted by financial considerations. If anyone here can assist in the matter by suggesting a sponsor or offering a venue, I and my fellow trustees would be delighted. And now I come to the main point that I would like to make this evening. None of it would have been realised without the generous and idealistic cooperation of the artists involved and the strangers who agreed to be the subjects. They certainly made this wonderful exhibition possible by their talent and their willingness to act on an ideal that we all shared and that we hoped to convey. Using my chance to speak here before you this evening, I want to thank the artists. Most of them are here with us this evening and fortunately we have the subjects of the Spanish, the British and the Latvian paintings here as well. So please express your admiration for their work and join me in thanking them for taking part. I'm now going to introduce our Member of Parliament for the Folkestone and Hyde constituency, Mr Damien Collins. Um, thank you very much, um, Bryony. Before I say a word about uh, Bryony and this wonderful exhibition, uh, it's been my privilege to introduce this exhibition twice. This is the second time. The first at its first opening in Folkestone at Sunflower House. But uh, um, I must have say something about being back in this, this building, in this room. I've not been in this building for 14 years. And uh, I'm going to tell what some of you may think is a brave anecdote as a Conservative MP. I'm going to tell a story about my youth involving a dead pig. Um, <laughs> But uh, luckily it, had been, it was dead for quite some time because the, the, uh, um, this, this room we're in was the press conference room for Conservative Central Office and my very first job after university uh, 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 was, was working here for a year or so uh, on the 1997 general election campaign uh, where, I met, where I met the lady who was to be my wife, uh, Sarah, who's here, here tonight. Um, and um, 
Uh, that was a, that was a formative experience in my youth. I mean, where we took a you know, Conservative Party government of over 300 MPs that had been power for 18 years and reduced it to a much more manageable number of about 160. But uh, <laughs> um, and, the, and, the, and the where the dead pig comes in is that every morning we had to get up at five in the morning to write briefing notes for John Major. Uh, before his press conference, and there was a room just through there where he was briefed by the powers that be. We'd write these notes. A, a young man from the, a young special advisor called George Osborne used to coordinate those briefings, uh, and um, and they would troop in here to have their press conference uh, as the days ticked down to the inevitable. And um, uh, at one point, the party chairman decided that he was really put off by the researchers having breakfast in the canteen that was through there. And the smell of bacon in particular was particularly <laughs> off-putting for him. So for a week, bacon was banned from being cooked in the building until morale collapsed so low uh, that it, it had to be brought back. So you can, uh, it's true what Napoleon said, an army marches on its stomach. And uh, great political leaders can make all sorts of decisions, but you can't stop hungry men and women having, uh, having bacon for breakfast with a thin up brown. So. But this, um, this exhibition is a triumph uh, in its own right, but particularly, uh, it's a great example of uh, Brian e. Kapoor's brilliant sort of creative imagination, but not just that, the ability to bring a fantastic project to fruition as well. It's a fantastically simple idea, a portrait of people from every single member state uh, of the European Union exhibited together. And whilst I think many of you will look at those paintings and think, I wonder which country they come from. I think, Peter, you're clearly the person from the UK. <laughs> Peter's just here. So just... <laughs> He's actually wearing a different colour shirt in the same <laughs> right? but it's remarkably similarly dressed. Um, but, uh, of course, there are, of course, a lot of representatives from the Romney Marsh here today as well. Uh, uh, Patricia Rolfe, the mayor of New Romney, is there in, in her chain. Uh, and uh, Carol Waters, the county councillor. Now, of course, people from Romney Marsh consider Romney Marsh to be a separate continent. So I was rather surprised that uh, the Bryony didn't commission an additional portrait just from Romney Marsh to go along with all the other EU member states. I think that would have been entirely appropriate. But um, I do hope you will enjoy the paintings and enjoy the exhibition. And I, I think it is a great, um, it, it's, it's a great privilege for me to be here. Uh, it was, as it was a year or so ago when we opened this exhibition in Folkestone, at Sunflower House, which is an amazing regeneration project in Folkestone, part of the story of arts and creativity regenerating a coastal town and a coastal community, and a community that is both you know, proud to be part of the UK, but one that always throughout its history has looked out to the rest of Europe and the rest of the world as well. So to have that exhibition in Folkestone was a great privilege. To have it here, uh, it, for me personally, is, is, is a privilege to be here as well, to, to see it displayed here uh, at the, at Smith's, in Smith Square. And I know this exhibition is going to go on to other locations in the UK, I hope to other places in Europe as well. And it uh, gives us a chance to reflect, um, I think, what is wonderful about Europe and about the creativity of people, the things that, uh, things that make us different and the things that unite us as well. So I hope you enjoy the exhibition. Thank you. I'd like to introduce Peter Wilding, although Damien's done a very good job of it, but Peter was going to say a few words as well. Yes. Hello. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Peter Wilding. I'm the director of something called British Influence, which is campaigning to keep Britain in the European Union in this referendum, which is uh, imminent. And this is, therefore, the most extraordinary privilege. It was when Damien, uh, uh, Bryony, and myself and others were at Folkestone unveiling these beautiful portraits. And my privilege is this, um, it's never happened to me before. <laughs> and of course it's a very rare thing to, to have something behind you, which, uh, which is you. And of course the only, the, only, the only, I just remind ladies and gentlemen who, uh, who of course we are in the uh, Schumann room here, but uh, just at the bottom is the Churchill room. And of course many of you will remember the funny story about Winston Churchill in the uh, late 50s standing in Westminster Hall, when a portrait was unveiled of himself. And uh, he turned round, and as you might remember, with a rather whimsical look on his face saying, yeah, I think this is a fine example yeah, of modern art. <laughs> and I can only say that um, this is not a fine example of modern art, it's a beautiful example of good portrait work, and I do thank Claire for the fantastic work she's done in there. Um, and I would just like to thank her, the other 
artists and, of course, the other victims, sorry, no, not victims, uh, who are in this room as well. Um, it's a curious thing, not just talking about the portrait, but, of course, talking about the wonderful Bryony. I mean, Damien, uh, who I've also known for years, uh, lives in the same constituency as Bryony, or perhaps it's the other way around. And, it's <laughs> and Bryony is just a force of nature, isn't she? Yes. And it's, it's most spectacular uh, to have met her. We actually uh, met in the Criterion restaurant some, uh, what, two years ago now, where she uh, unveiled this concept to me. And I thought it was just a magical idea. So often in politics, uh, it's all about facts and stats. It's all about boring stuff. And actually, if indeed it's true that we live in an era now of the new politics, Damien, uh, authenticity counts. And Bryony really just put her finger on the pulse of what authenticity about the European project is. And I'll just conclude my remarks very briefly um, with, uh, with a kind of a sort of twin track story. It is a remarkable coincidence that, albeit meeting Bryony only a couple of years ago, I met her brother in 1982 when I was at university because it was her brother, bizarrely, who was a lecturer in European law at Birmingham University, so it's all his fault. <laughs> He's not here today, but Brian is. Um, and the second thing, of course, is what these wonderful portraits represent is the curious dichotomy at the heart of the European project, which is summed up in its slogan, of course, unity and diversity. And here we have the unity of the values that Brian mentioned, the unity of purpose in what we're seeking to achieve in the continent, but of course the diversity of the faces and the lives of these people in front of you. And if anything, actually, expresses the magnificence of our continent, Bryony, I think this does. So thank you very much and thank you all for coming.